And I looked at it and I thought, look at this. Just look at this text. This is incredible. Everything's here. The great things are here. Let's list them off for you. Starting at verse 12. Death, sin, life, God, Christ, mortal bodies, desires, law, grace. These massive realities. These are the big things in life. These are the huge issues. And as I meditated on it, I thought, you know, as I stand there tomorrow morning and say that, there are going to be people in this room who don't care about this at all. There's some of you sitting there who have no emotional resonance with what I am saying at all about God and Christ and sin and salvation and heaven and hell and law and grace and desires and the body and deliverance being the big, glorious, great issues of life. You don't feel that right now at all. Oh, you frankly are very excited about the new CD you just got. Watching a ball game. Wearing a new outfit. Will anybody notice? Getting a new computer. Adding a room on the house. This is what gets you emotionally. And my venting here about the great things lands on you dead. To which I want to say with the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 5, Wake up, O sleeper, from the dead, and Christ will give you life. Don't be like the person who goes with a little garden shovel to the Grand Canyon stands on the precipice of that majesty, turns his back on it, kneels down, and digs a little trough in the ground, and says to all of his friends, Hey, come here. Look at this. Look at my trough. Isn't this cool? Look at my trough. So, if your heart is being carried away right now with small things, and not God, and not the cross, and not Christ, and not the solution to sin, and not heaven, and not union with Jesus, and you're really excited about nothings, then stand up, turn around, and look at the canyon. Look at the canyon this morning. If you feel like, I looked at it already, I like my trough, then pray, pray that God would open your eyes. Look, this is not, this is not funny at all. Because sin has such a power over our lives that it takes our minds, it takes our hearts, and it just shrivels them up. So we have no capacity to enjoy God. No capacity to marvel at grace and salvation and the new heavens and the new earth and tears being taken away by King Jesus someday. And all we can get excited about is troughs and trifles in our lives. That's sin. That's a disease. It's a horrible, horrible disease that grips most people in the world. And if you're one of them, you should just be whispering right now. Because just a little thought, I mean just a little thought, will make it clear 
that if you're more excited about a trough you've dug than a canyon God dug, you're sick. And you should pray, Oh God, heal me. Give taste buds to the tongue of my soul so that when I taste of the things that John's going to talk about in this text, I will taste them. I will lick and just find it nothing, which has been the case all my life. Pray that you be healed. That God would wake you up to reality. Big reality. So you don't have to waste your life on trifles. Most people are very content with trifles. They feel so good. And they have no taste for God. No taste for heaven. No taste for holiness. No taste for righteousness. No taste for Christ. No taste for justice in Him. No taste for heaven. No fear of hell. They're blind. We're going to spend two weeks on this text. It is so dense with reality. 